the reason why I'm here is there's a sense of urgency to yeah. my work because I fundamentally believe that if we are unable to take the House and Senate this November, I firmly believe that our country is done for. It's over. And that's why when I'm done with you all, I'm going to Texas tomorrow. Then two days later, I'm going to California for a week. Then I'm going straight to Nevada. Then I'm going to Ohio. Then I'm going to Savannah, Georgia. Then I'm going to Mar-a-Lago. Then I'm going to CPAC. My entire schedule is already planned out until July of this year. And I want you to know that I'm working night and day because I love our country. And I'm going to do everything because freedom is worth fighting for. And if you have ever felt called to serve. Now is your moment in history. Don't be a quiet observer. Don't sit back. Don't be the one to tell your children, I didn't fight. I watched it happen. Hello, Tulsa, Oklahoma! Low energy. That was Jeb Bush. Bless his heart. Let's do it again. Hello, Tulsa! Okay, there we go. Well, I do want to give a shout out. Can we please honor the Spirit Life Church who was allowing us to use their facility today? Can we give them a round of applause, please? And Jana, she has opened her home to me. And yes, I am cuddling with her two animals. So I do want to thank, <laughs> thank Miss Jana. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Scott Pressler. I'm the son of a retired Navy captain. I am that long haired Eagle Scout. <laughs> <laughs> And this year at CPAC, I was very humbled to receive the Ronald Reagan Award for Freedom. But how did I get started? I graduated from George Mason University with a 3.63 beauty and brains. I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> I couldn't find a job. This was after the President Obama recession, but I didn't blame other people. I wasn't a victim. I started walking dogs for a living because I want people to know that there's no shame in a hard day's work, in an honest day's labor. I went on to work at an elementary school, and it was during this time at the school that President Obama was re-elected, and it was that night that I created my Twitter account because I pointed the finger back at me and I said, Scott, where were you knocking on doors? Where were you registering voters? Where were you getting out the vote? And the answer is really that I hadn't been an active participant in our constitutional republic. Now, the reason why I'm wearing cowboy boots as a Virginian here in the state of Oklahoma is in 2014, I got my first ever political job helping to elect Governor Greg Abbott in the great state of Texas who is building a wall along the southern border. About time. Then I knew how important it was after Antonin Scalia passed away that we maintain a conservative majority on the Supreme Court. And with your help, I spent two years of my life working to defeat the Hillary Clinton, which we did. And I've spent the last five years of my life traveling the country, registering thousands of voters, training tens of thousands of volunteers, and cleaning up our cities. Do you guys remember when President Trump brought up the city of Baltimore, Maryland? Well, again, how I was disappointed in my inaction that helped result in President Obama's reelection, I was actually really disappointed in society 
because I saw that everybody, they were quick to judge. They were quick to talk about trash in Baltimore, but not a single person was offering a solution. So I tweeted out to my followers and said, okay, I'm going to Baltimore. The tweet went viral. Everybody across the country, including Oklahoma, wanted to help. And then I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Within six days, we organized a cleanup on a Monday. And with 200 volunteers, we picked up 12 tons of trash in 12 hours in one day. I went home to my ma, and I was like, ma, I'm really good at picking up trash. <laughs> You see, it was at that moment, her heart swelled with pride. <laughs> Cause her baby boy, that dog walker, well he done turned into a trash collector. <laughs> and part of the reason why I share this story with you is I want you to understand the power of one. I'm no different than you. I'm an average, ordinary American citizen. Rude. <laughs> Disrespectful. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's the Democrats, it's Hillary Clinton. She knows we're here. And I want you to understand that the only thing that I did different in my life is that our society so often tells us to say, who will? And I dared to say, I will. And I hope that all of you, you don't just go home after this event and go home, but you are encouraged to make your motto in life that you will step up, that you will take action, that you will be that person who dares to say, I will. And in two years time, we've organized cleanups in Atlanta, Austin, Baltimore, Chicago, Denver, Duquesne, Detroit, Houston, Kenosha, Los Angeles, Miami, Milwaukee, Nashville, Portland, Pittsburgh, Philly. I was protested for picking up trash <laughs> in San Francisco, California. Bless their hearts. Do you all know what that saying means? Well, for any of you who don't, when I first moved to Texas, I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> and it was getting real hot in the month of May, and I was going around to everyone saying, I'm sweltering, <laughs> it's so hot, and they'd all kind of cock their head and look at me and say, bless your heart. <laughs> I called up my mom and dad, and I was so excited. Mom, I love Texas. Everyone's so nice. They're all blessing my heart. <laughs> Come to find out, it's a real nice Southern way of saying, you're dumb as hell. <laughs> but you're cute. <laughs> now who here has ever thought about running for office before? Don't be shy, raise those hands. Okay, good, quite a few of you. Now, even for those of you who will never dream of running for office, what I'm gonna talk about today is gonna make sure that this November, we have a decisive, overwhelming, America first Republican victory! Yeah. Next, please. So first, I want to talk voter registration, and I want to talk the state of Florida. How's Governor DeSantis doing? Woo! Doing a good job, you guys like him? Let's talk voter registration, because in 2012, the Democrats had a voter registration advantage in Florida of 500,000. And despite that, Mitt Romney, only in the 2012 election, only lost by 73,000 votes. Fast forward four years to 2016, we narrowed the Democratic advantage in voter registration down to 330,000. And President Trump won the state 
state of Florida with over 100,000 votes. Fast forward four years to 2020, we narrowed the Democratic advantage of voter registration down to 100,000. And President Trump in Florida in 2020 won a landslide with over 300,000 more votes than the Democrats. And today, I'm very proud to say that for the first time in the history of the state of Florida, there are more registered Republicans than Democrats. That's never happened, ever. So I want you to see that as the Democratic voter registration advantage went down, our share of the Republican vote in presidential years went up. So if we want to be competitive and make sure that Oklahoma continues to be a conservative state, we must continue registering new Republican voters. Next, please. So I've compiled, which I will make this presentation available to Ms. Rhonda and all of you, all of the swing states that you can actually check their voter registration status on how many Democrats or Republicans there are. And just to give you an idea, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in the last two months, there are now 13,000 fewer Democrats than there were two months ago. We're making gains in Arizona, Nevada, North Carolina. Next slide. And actually, you can do one more. Now, in order to move forward, we must first revisit the past. This is Hill. Hill doesn't think that she lost her election democratically. It had to have been Russian collusion. It had to have been Russian interference. And clearly in the 2020 election, we had shenanigans of our own that went on. But guys, here's the difference. How did the Democrats respond to losing their election versus how are we going to use this critical and crucial time right now in preparation for the 2022 midterm election? Next slide. Have you guys ever heard of ballot harvesting? Do you know what that is? I, I want you to understand. In the state of California, ballot harvesting is legal, democratic. They didn't cheat in 2018. You know what they did? They changed the law. They changed the rules and they used the vehicle of federalism, states' rights, and state autonomy to do it. Because they're a trifecta state government in the state of California, very much like you guys are a trifecta here in Oklahoma. So the game is, if we want to use the vehicle that the Democrats have done, we need to change the law and change the rules. And what was the fruit of their labor? Every single congressional district in Orange County went from red to blue. They impeached the president. They did the Mueller investigation, but never forget, they did it legally. Next slide. So this is actually really important. This is constitutional amendments in November 2021. Get this. New York State voted against no excuse mail-in voting. New York State voted against same-day voter registration. And if New York State can vote against those proposed amendments, then why can't we do that everywhere? This is election integrity. This is making sure that we're having safe and secure, fair and free elections. And so we need to think about doing constitutional amendments or referendums here in the state of Oklahoma, which will get more people and galvanize them out to vote, which will help the top to the bottom of the ticket. Next slide. I'm a crazy man. In 2021, I visited 28 states because I want you guys to know that I have a battle plan of action. In addition to continuing to keep Oklahoma red, I'm focused on Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Why? Because Republicans control the state legislatures in all three states. We got the state Senate. We got the state House. We only don't have the governorships, right? So here's the plan. The plan is, in 2021, we're going to flip the governorships of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, thereby creating three additional trifecta state governments. Then we're going to pass election integrity legislation, which will pave the way to take back that White House. Woo! 
And so I want you guys to repeat after me. Everybody say openstates.org. Say it. You will be tested. And if you fail, you will be punished. Your punishment is spending an evening going to dinner with Mitt Romney. Oh my God. Yep, yep, yep. And <laughs> he's going to bring his friend, Liz Cheney. Oh so I'm watching. I am listening, Mama June. I am making sure you're paying attention. Okay, so why is this such a cool website? Because if you go to openstates.org and you type in your home address, you will have access to your state senator, to your state representative. You got their office, you got their email, you got their phone number. There's then no excuse why you, as the concerned citizen, can't contact the very people that represent you to pass legislation that you want. Want. And so, what do you say, Scott? I'm intimidated. I've never done this before. What the heck do I do? Pick up the phone. My name is, I'm a constituent of yours. What are you doing to sponsor or co sponsor election integrity legislation? What are you doing to sponsor or co sponsor medical freedom? No mask mandates, no vaccine passports. What are you doing to sponsor or co sponsor funding our police? You want a track record of having them put their name on legislation because if they are unwilling to do so, then they are unwilling to pass said legislation. Next slide. Who is this woman? Can anyone tell me? A hero. Heroine. No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. And so I love the Hispanic community because the Hispanic community calls her K Mala, which in Espanol means how bad, how unlucky. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. K Mala. And so, <laughs> isn't that, I know. And so I am a staunch Republican, but I'm also cognizant that the only thing saving our country right now, ironically enough, are two Democrats, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. And I say, God bless them. Because if it weren't for these two Democrats, they would have busted the filibuster, meaning that they only need 50 votes plus one, which is Kamala, meaning that they would do the infrastructure bill, meaning that they would do the gun grabbing bill, meaning that they would do DC, a 51st state, adding two Democratic senators, meaning that they would do a pathway to citizenship for 11 million illegal aliens, meaning that they would federalize our elections, doing no excuse mail-in voting, same day voter registration, and taking away our ability to ever win back the White House. These two Democrats. I know this may be a little different for you being Republicans, but you need to thank a Democrat. <laughs> so you can use the website Senate.gov to contact any member of the United States Senate. Now, just because you're in the state of Oklahoma doesn't mean you can't contact senators in other states because what they vote on is going to affect you in the state of Oklahoma. And these are what I call squishy Democrats. A squishy Republican is a Susan Collins, is a Mitt Romney, is an Adam Kinzinger, is a Jeff Flake, is a Rob Portman, is a John Kasich, you understand what I'm saying. A squishy Democrat, these are the people that you want to focus on as Oklahomans because you're going to have more power by making sure that they vote the way we want to vote. Joe Manchin, West Virginia. Tester, Montana. Cinema, Arizona. Kelly, Arizona. Hassan, New Hampshire. Warnock, Georgia, and Brown, Ohio. Now, what do politicians care the most about? Getting re-elected. They don't care about us. They care about money, control, power, and ultimately staying in power, which means getting reelected. So if you make them feel vulnerable, like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema in purple, red states are feeling that vulnerability, that's the reason why they haven't voted with the Democrats. So use your leverage even here from the state of Oklahoma to make them feel that vulnerability. Next slide, please. Now, how does a bill become a law? Everybody say, subcommittee. 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 
a subcommittee is a place where bills go to die. And what I mean by that is legislation just isn't voted on by a state house or state senate. If you want to be the most effective and efficient at passing legislation, that means that you first want to contact the members of a subcommittee in order for it to come out of subcommittee. So for example, you'll start with the state house subcommittee, tell the members if that legislation is what you want out that they need to affirm it. Then you're going to contact your state house members in order to pass it out of state house. Then you're going to go over to the state senate subcommittee, affirm it. You're going to lobby your state senators. And once both chambers have concurrent, meaning the same legislation, then you lobby the governor to sign it into law. Does that make sense? Yes. Is that clear? Yes. Next slide. So here's an example of an election integrity state senate subcommittee in Arizona. Now there are eight members. Five of them have an R next to their name. What does that mean? Majority. Five out of eight. That means that we can affirm or deny anything we want, but only if concerned citizens make their voices heard. So I've included both a telephone and an email address. Why? Because when you call, you're probably going to get a staffer on the phone. But when you email, I've heard from legislators themselves that they actually read their own emails. So take the time to both call and email. And what website can you use? This quadrant good? <laughs> mm. <laughs> and chairwoman, chair. No, I'm just kidding. I need, to, I need to hear a bump, Mr. Harris. I need to hear a bump over here, mom. Come on now. Okay. I'm just kidding. So, openstates.org is going to be your key. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Everybody say legiscan.com. Loud! Now this is a really cool website. Why? Because get this. Every piece of legislation that's been introduced in every state house, in every state senate, in all 50 states is on this website. So if you got girlfriends in Tennessee, tell them about legiscan.com. If you got girlfriends in California, Bless their hearts. <laughs> tell, tell, tell them to move here and vote Republican. Now, this is powerful because it's not only legislation that Republicans have introduced, but it could be Democratic legislation. It could be on medical marijuana. It could be on vaccine passports. It could be on criminal justice reform. You have the opportunity to read legislation and surmise what it's about even before it goes to subcommittee or it's even voted on. This empowers you, the voter. Next slide. So my goal today is to impress upon you the importance of not just winning at the federal and presidential level, but really, if we, why were the Democrats able to shut down guys? Even being in a Republican state, it didn't matter who the governor was. It didn't matter who the state legislature was in control of. It mattered who controlled the cities, who controlled the mayors, who controlled the school boards. In some cases, who controlled the executors or sheriff positions. And you hear me loud and clear. If we take over locally in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, the Democrats can never shut us down again. Next, please. And so, guys, if you're running for office, you got to get people to like you. And so, what do people know about me? Here's my mom and dad. My mom and dad have been married for 39 years. They share true love. My dad still calls my mom his bride, which I think is the cutest thing in the world. There's me with some fur babies, because I was that dog walker. And the third photo, that's from Baltimore, an act of love that forever changed my life. And in the last photo, I'm at the White House with Judge Janine Pirro. I know. I was fanboying hard. 
We took pictures together, but the lighting was awful. She took my phone and deleted our photos off of my phone. We had to reposition with good lighting and I got to keep those. <laughs> So my story, it's very important to have a brand when you run for office. My brand would be from the doghouse to the White House. Next slide, please. Isn't that good? I wrote it myself. Brilliant. So when you're running for office, you're going to get this question. They're going to say, Preston, why? Why you? Why now? But you see, your why is really going to stem from your who. Who are you as a person? Are you a ma? Are you a veteran? Are you an entrepreneur? What is your background? And then your who is gonna build into your why. You're a ma that cares about your babies. You're an entrepreneur that cares about your employees and that they have a paycheck so they can feed their families. And you see your who is gonna build into your why, which then builds into your policy. You're a ma that cares about babies. Therefore, you're running for school board because you want to ban critical race theory from our schools, because you want parental choice and education, because you want to make sure that we don't have pornography in our elementary and high schools. And then you're an entrepreneur who cares about employees. So therefore, your policy is no vaccine passports, no mask mandates. You want choice and accountability that we, the American people, not government, get to dictate how to run our lives. Now, I've got some representatives of the Republican Party. Who's the guy with kind of squirrely hair? What's his name? <laughs> what do we know about Rand Paul? Kentucky, constitutional. A uh, libertarian. Now, who is that African American woman that is the first ever Lieutenant Governor Republican woman in the Commonwealth of Virginia? Sears. Winsome Sears. And I want to make it clear, I want you guys to be encouraged going into this November. We haven't won a statewide election in the Commonwealth of Virginia since 2009. And if we can flip Virginia, by gosh, we can flip Tulsa. We can flip Oklahoma City. We can flip New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, Oregon. Anyway. Who's the football star from Utah? What's his name? Burgess Owens. Burgess Owens. And who's that last guy? What's his name? What do we know about Ted Cruz? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Ladies, doesn't he look so much better with a beard? When he grew out that beard, I said, thank heavens. That's the importance, guys, of branding, that you guys know their background, their story, their name, their accomplishments, simply by looking at a picture. That's why branding and story are so important. Next slide, please. Who's the stash? What's his name? <laughs> what do we know about Mike Lindell? <laughs> he gives out pillows to people. And you know, some people say to me, they say, Scott, I can't run for office. I got too many skeletons in my closet. And my response is, have you seen the Democrats? <laughs> have you seen Hillary Clinton? Except her skeletons are real. Ooh, did I say that? Bad Scott, bad Scott. Now, Mike Lindell does have a past. He's a former crack cocaine addict, but I want to make something clear. Mike Lindell is an American success story. He's a man that built his business from the ground up, successful multimillionaire who is the ear of the President of the United States. And quite frankly, Mike Lindell is the reason why we're here at Spirit Life today, because we believe fundamentally as American citizens that you can start as nothing but through hard work and determination, achieve anything you want. And that's what we're fighting for, for the American dream, that the next generation of leadership, we can pass on the torch of liberty. Who's the young lady? What's her name? That's AOC. And you know, there's a very specific reason why I have bartender on the screen. I actually, I want to push back against that. Because when I ask for information about AOC, sometimes Republicans will say in a pejorative or derogatory manner, call her a bartender. And I want to make it clear, we're the Republican Party. 
That means that we represent working class America. And I don't care if you're the janitor at McDonald's or whether you are the CEO of a major Fortune 500 company. When you are a worker, when you are contributing to society, you have a place within our working class Republican Party. And so every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Don't be afraid to share your story because to err is human, but to forgive divine. Remember that vulnerability is relatable. And that's why we love the stash because so many people are attracted to his story of being able to overcome addiction. Next slide. Please. <laughs> they, were, they, they were waiting for the blues. So I'm beating this into your gosh darn heads. Run for local office. And yes, I mean you that's thinking about it right now. We need normal, average, hardworking American citizens that want to put the constitutional the Constitution first serving our country. Run for mayor, state senate, school board, state rep, city council, ladies! I want you to slither your way <laughs> into the League of Women Voters. They are a democratic, Marxist, far left 501c3 group that has access to our schools. Are we going to allow them unchecked and registering high school students to vote? No. no. So do what you have to do. Wear a pink hat. You know, put on black, thick-rimmed Rachel Maddow glasses, look like a Democrat, what you want to do. But in all seriousness, we need to infiltrate some of these Democratic groups to understand what they're doing in preparation for the 2022 elections so we can learn from them. And I'm not saying act like a Democrat, but use their own trainings against them. Next slide. Everybody, what was the very first website I taught you? Okay, what was the one that starts with an L? Ooh, that was rough. <laughs> oh, Mitt Romney is coming, Liz Cheney. Okay, everybody, please say ballotpedia.org. Say it! Now this one's especially cool. Now guys, get this. We right now are only six seats away from taking the house and taking the gavel away from Nancy Pelosi. And at this very, oh, it gets better, baby. It gets better because at this very moment, 29 Democrats are retiring, not running for re-election because they know it's coming. A red tsunami is coming. So here's an example. One woman, her name is Ann Kirkpatrick. She's in the state of Arizona. And I thought to myself, is this district flippable? Is this winnable? So I typed into the internet, A, Z, 2, C, D, Ballotpedia. What does that mean? Arizona's second congressional district, Ballotpedia. Boom, the website pops up. Now, what does the website tell you? It shows you a map of the district. It tells you the population. It tells you how many voters are registered. It tells you how democratic it is, how Republican it is. It tells you the median income. It tells you everything you need to know about the district, including it has these little numbers next to it. If you see something that says D plus three, that means it's three points more democratic than the national average of congressional districts. If you see R plus seven, it's seven points more Republican than the national average of congressional districts. As that number gets closer to zero, the more flippable, more winnable, more electable a congressional district is. So Ballotpedia is going to help you decipher because Oklahoma, we're all red. We are red governorship, we are red federal, we are red the state senate, we are red at the state house. So you guys can use your resources to pool into other states like Texas to make sure that we are flipping some of those house seats from blue to red while we are making sure that we stay a Republican state here in the state of Oklahoma. Next slide. 
And so here are five seats right now at this very moment that you as Oklahomans can focus on in order to make sure that we defeat Nancy Pelosi. Number one, Virginia's second congressional district, home to the largest naval base in the entire world, Virginia Beach and Norfolk, Virginia. Now, this district, which is currently represented by a Democrat, voted eight percentage points more for Glenn Youngkin for governor of Virginia. You know why? Because military families don't take kindly when Joe Biden left Americans behind in Afghanistan. Military families don't take kindly when Joe Biden gave billions of dollars to the Taliban. And you know what my question is? Now look at what's happening with Ukraine. Is Joe Biden, are you going to leave Americans behind in Ukraine the very way that you did in Afghanistan? And I don't know about you, but I say no war with Russia. We are done with your wars. Invest in us and our country. We are done. Florida's 7th Congressional District. This is home to Orlando, Seminole County, Florida. Stephanie Murphy is a Democrat who's retiring, not running for re-election. They redrew this district more Republican. Florida's 13th Congressional District, Pinellas County, Clearwater, St. Petersburg. Charlie Crist decided to run for governor, bless his heart. And so this is an open seat. Now here's why this is so important important. Pinellas County in August of 2021 had 2,700 more Democrats than Republicans. I checked today, there are now 1,500 more Republicans than Democrats in Pinellas County, Florida. Georgia's sixth district, represented by Lucy McBath. This district is being redrawn more Republican, actually so much so that Lucy McBath is jumping ship to Georgia's seventh district to run as a Democrat. This is flippable. And last, Texas's 15th district, represented by Vicente Gonzalez. It's being drawn more Republican, so much so that the Democrat incumbent is switching districts to run in another district. And the the significance of Texas 15 is this is a border, Hispanic, majority Democrat area that is trending Republican. And I want to make it clear that the Hispanic community is a backbone of the Republican Party, and we welcome the Hispanic community to join our working class Republican Party. Next slide. You have certain expenditures. You can go to the next slide, please. Your first one is a campaign manager. Now, if you're running for local office, you don't necessarily need a campaign manager for school board, a city council. It's certainly helpful, but I have had some people who were successful that didn't have a campaign manager for school board or local races. The first primary responsibility is scheduling, making sure that your behind shows up to every baby kissing contest, every Girl Scout ceremony, every meet and greet, fundraiser, because a constituent will remember if you're behind doesn't show up. Then you've got press releases. Now, does anybody know why I have recently visited Wyoming? Because we are working to defeat and oust Liz Cheney from Congress. <clears throat> so, in preparation for my visit, I wrote a press release. Does anybody know how I knew how to write a press release? I typed into the internet, how do you write a press release? <laughs> and then I wrote it. <laughs> okay, here's the title, it's so good. Conservative activists heads to Wyoming to primary disgraced warmonger representative. It's so good, it's so good. No, but it gets better because guys, when you write a press release, you actually have to quote yourself. I quoted myself. <laughs> I'm a Virginian who's heading to Wyoming to send the disgraced warmonger back to Virginia. She'll fit in right at home with her DC elitist swamp dwellers. <laughs> so good. So I wrote a press release for zero dollars 
that I posted on social media for zero dollars, that I included my email, because that's what you do when you write a press release, a member of the media came to my event, wrote a positive article, and I got free advertising for zero dollars. This is the way that you play the game. It's all an entertainment industry. That's what politics is. Stay on message. Don't have 20 policy positions. You're going to confuse the heck out of people. Have three. Open our schools, open our businesses, cut taxes. Or no vaccine passports, lower our crime, fund the police. One, two, three. Last, public relations. These are any of your gigs on TV, uh, radio, any vehicle of communication that you use in order to reach out to your constituents. Next slide, please. Treasurer is important. You must have a treasurer. Must, must, must. And this needs to be somebody that you trust with your life, Robin. And I mean that. Don't just get somebody from LinkedIn. Because if they foul up on, I'm serious. I'm serious. If they foul up on your documentation, you may be indicted. Your name will be dragged through the mud, and the Democrats will have ammunition to use against you. You got these things called campaign finance disclosure forms. They got them for all 50 states. Type into the internet. Oklahoma, campaign finance disclosure form. Texas, Pennsylvania, you get the drift. Every contribution and expenditure must be uh, accounted for, including in-kind donations. That's if somebody is kind enough to lend you office space, for example, that has a monetary value associated with it, that you must report that. Next slide. Now, who here has been banned from Twitter? Raise your hand. Excellent job. Good work. Now, I know we're at a church, and I'm very thankful the pastor's not here to hear this. My mom got suspended from Twitter. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, pastor. She called Alyssa Milano a skank. <laughs> I said, Mom. Stop it! Because she had on her Twitter account, mother of Scott Pressler, great job, mom, wonderful work. And I do apologize to any parents. That's why I whispered it. I wanted to be respectful. Now, I do think it's a good thing that the Democrats have gone so far left that they banned the president of the United States from Twitter, but the Taliban has a Twitter account. But the Ayatollah who chant death to Israel, death to America, how does that not violate their terms of service? And then you have a sitting congresswoman, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's deplatformed from Twitter. I'm glad that they went so far left because you know what it did? It forced us to create alternative social medias. We now have Gab. We now have Getter. We now have Parler. We now have Telegram. We will soon have True Social. We are in a stronger position now to communicate with each other than we were going into either 2016 or 2020. We're more powerful. However, don't get off Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Why? Because you're wonderful people, but if I only talk to you, I'm preaching to the choir. You agree with me. We have to continue to reach out to the independent voter, the soft democratic voter. If you're running for office, you must have a website, scottpressler.org. Why? Because data is king. Data wins elections. First name, last name, email address, phone number, home address, social media. Why? Because that's going to turn into fundraising emails. Why? Because that's ultimately going to galvanize and push people to vote for your behind. Next slide. Now, who here has ever knocked on a door for a Republican candidate? Raise your hand. You're my favorite. <laughs> mm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm so glad you're here. Now, <laughs> do I knock on every door in a neighborhood? No. Why? Why, Tim Harris? Don't poke the bear. Only go <laughs> Don't poke the bear. Well, he's right in that this is a science. That's, this is really a political science. For example, could I be convinced to vote for Stacey Abrams? 
<laughs> no, no, I could never be convinced. So why would I spend my time trying to convince something of somebody who the data already tells us they're a hard Democrat, they're already a Bernie Sanders supporter, they love Joe Biden and have a shrine to him? No, I'm not going to convert that person. So we have these things called uh, door knocking applications, Advantage Mobile, Voter Gravity, I360, and you have different data sources that give us that data on people. For example, voter history in the state of Oklahoma, you can register to vote as a Republican, right? That tells us what you are. And then you've got consumer data. Consumer data is what you buy. So if you buy a whole bunch of ammo and you consider yourself an ammo sexual, <laughs> and if you, buy, if you buy a whole bunch of Bibles, and if you have a subscription to Country Life magazine, that's, that's a Republican. And so that data allows me to know which doors to knock on in order to get out the vote effectively and efficiently. Now you have five levels of voters. You've got a hard Republican, a soft Republican, an independent, a soft Democrat, and a hard Democrat. I call hard Democrats communist. <laughs> Call them what they are. And so, in this really cute photo of me, you know that it's me because I have my really long hair and I have my cowboy boots, so it's all branding. It's all PR. Next slide. Now, in this second really cute picture of me, I want you guys, <laughs> I want you guys to understand that your biggest expenditure is actually mailers. If you are spending more money on a consultant than you are mailers and get out the vote activities, I want you to fire they behind immediately. And I mean that because Republican consultants are the reason why, for example, we don't currently have the House because they don't focus on the D plus seven and fewer and R plus seven and fewer. They're focused on districts that are very difficult to win when we should be spending that money effectively and efficiently in districts that are competitive. So you, now what's the difference in this photo between a mailer and what I'm holding? Door hanger, there's a legal difference. I am not legally allowed to put a door hanger on or inside of a mailbox. That is a federal crime. And that's why mailers are so important because especially during COVID, if you were unable to have face-to-face -face conversation and give literature to somebody, they use the vehicle of the USPS system in order to get their message to the constituent. Next slide. Do you guys get text messages on your phone? All the time? Do you guys reply? Sometimes you do? Okay. Well, these are different vehicles of fundraising. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, by the way, is the most prolific fundraiser. She's one of the most successful House Republican fundraisers. And what she's done successfully is I've been talking about building a brand and story. Look at the people who are Republican that have been traveling the country. Matt Gates. Uh, Madison Cawthorn, Lauren Boebert, MTG, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Why are they some of the rising stars in the Republican Party? Because they've done a great job at building a brand and harnessing the power of social media. So it's very important that you have an all of the above approach when it comes to raising money. Yes, you're gonna send out emails, even though right now you have 30 different emails in your inbox asking for money. You're going to use social media. You're going to try using tech text messages, but I rather prefer peer-to-peer -peer texting as opposed to a blanket text to people. And last, how many of you in this room, raise your hand if you received a knock on your door to vote for a Republican in the 2020 election? Okay, maybe 10, 11, 12 of you. Now, that tells me that you guys are hard Republicans. Now, what that means is you guys don't necessarily need a knock on your door. You're going to vote Republican. You're going to come out in every election. But you know what that also tells me? It tells me that you're an untapped resource. Because if I were running a campaign, running for a Republican primary, I would focus on hard Republicans first. Because you guys are gonna be the backbone. Will you set up a house meeting 
meeting for me? Will you donate to my campaign? Will you volunteer for my campaign? Will you put out a yard sign for my campaign? Then, once you have won your primary, you then go into soft Republican, independent, and soft Democratic voters. Why don't I talk to hard Democrats? They're communists. Communists. <laughs> Get used to saying it. Communists. Next slide. <laughs> Having a personal touch is very important. When I, uh, I send out thank you letters across the country, I've written 3,000 thank you letters in cursive. <laughs> It's gonna be like hieroglyphics in a few years. It's gonna be a secret code, our way of talking to each other. But having a personal touch is important. I strongly encourage when you have knocked on a door and built a good rapport with a voter, that you write them a handwritten letter that you deliver within three days. Because it shows that you are an active listener. It shows that you give a darn. It shows that you're going the extra mile, that you really wanna earn their vote. Next slide. Who here has been banned from Twitter? Raise your hand. Banned from Twitter. <laughs> Excellent. Miss Laura, you did good. Who here has a Twitter? Raise your hand. Who here doesn't have a Twitter? Raise your hand. This is for everybody. OK, so get this. This is actually really cool. It's kind of creepy, but it's really cool. Next slide. So in my spare time, I search and hunt people down on social media. So what I do, <laughs> so what I do is I type into the search magnifying glass, I moved to Florida because I'm very focused on re-electing Governor Ron DeSantis. And when somebody moves, they have to register to vote at their current address, right? So one of the people that I found, his uh, tweet was, I moved with my grandma to Florida, and she takes a trillion pills a day. We've been arguing. So I went to his profile, you know, just curious. I want to find out if he's a conservative or liberal. And on his profile, it says, COVID-19 is nothing more than a robbery in progress. <laughs> and I thought to myself, OK, this is promising. <laughs> I, I went through his tweets and something that he reposted, it says, know your parasites, deer tick, dog tick. It has a picture of Bill Gates and it says, Luna tick. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is a Republican. <laughs> so his original tweet talking about his grandma I replied to it and I said, thank you for being a good grandson. Are you registered to vote at your current address? And then I included the online link for the state of Florida that he can register to vote. It's that easy. And guys, you can do this for Tulsa, Oklahoma. You can do this for Oklahoma City. Type in, I moved to Tulsa. I moved to Oklahoma. Go to their profile, search. Find sleuth and then <laughs> and then message them. Next slide. Again, this is super creepy, but it works. So <laughs> in my spare time, I joined a group called Tampa Bay Living New to Tampa. Because when you're new to an area, you have to register to vote at your current address. So there are 5,000 members. I spend my spare time going through those 5,000 people. <laughs> and I go through their profiles. Next slide. Now this gentleman, I blocked out his name and light. Oh, it didn't block out. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I promise it did earlier, sorry, Dan. Anyway, he worked at the Leadership Institute. That's a conservative organization. So I then messaged him, hi, Dan, I saw you're in the New to Tampa group, and I just wanted to make sure you registered to vote at your current address. <laughs> I know, but it's a fun way that you, from the comfort of your bed in Oklahoma, can affect Texas elections, can affect Florida elections, can make sure that people are voting. What's the primary? Primary. February. What day? February 8th. 
that you from the comfort of your bed can help to win elections. Now here's a new one. I haven't added this in the presentation, but if you go to Joe Biden's Facebook post or go to the White House page, the majority of comments are actually anti Joe Biden. So if you want to make a difference and you can't really knock on doors or you can't really stand outside registering voters, comment under every Joe Biden anti post and say, hey, are you registered to vote at your current address? <laughs> now, you think I'm joking, I don't play around. I do not play. Now, what I want you to do, because we have to trick Facebook into making sure we're not bots, so I want you to change up your language. Hey, I'm Scott, are you registered to vote at your current address? Or hey, I just wanted to make sure you're registered. Because if you use the same saying over and over, it may spam you. So if you wanna be the most effective, change up your language per post so that way Facebook doesn't block you. you Next can slide. Tag you, in the post. I mean, that's what I do. you, yeah, you can tag me, girl. Tag, girlfriend. And I do, you saw, yeah. I always comment. I go, are you registered to vote at your current address? Next slide. Oh, here we go. So I'm all about cutting corners. And cu what I mean is cutting costs because you're gonna have limited resources. I've heard that there's this billionaire who's funding several of our can uh, uh, opponents trying to win over school board, city council races. I've heard of uh, a program where they're trying to pay people to come to Tulsa and work remotely in an effort to turn Oklahoma blue. And so I really like freeconferencecall.com because it's free and you can have all the members of your phone call on at the same time and it's private. Why is it private? Because only the people that have the access code associated with the number can join the phone call. I really like Zoom and also Gmail. Do you guys know what an Excel document is? Do you know what Word is? Do you know what PowerPoint is? This is a Google Doc. Meaning that as opposed to having to download something, this is actually a live URL link that I can send globally at the click of a button and I can have people in Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Iran, all working on a document at the same exact moment. And I know what part of the document they're in and I'm able to hold my team accountable for their work. Next slide. Oh, also, Miss uh, Rhonda, I'll make you a promise. I have this thing called a Google Form that that I use. And what I do is I solicit information asking for first name, last name, email address, and phone number. So if you, Miss Rhonda, provide for me a member of the Oklahoma, excuse me, Tulsa County GOP that will follow up with volunteers, I will, even when I'm not here, recruit volunteers to make sure that we are growing the Tulsa County GOP even in my absence. <laughs> When I visited Baltimore, they criticized me. They attacked me for picking up trash. How rude, disrespectful. And so I wrote a letter to the editor. How did I know how to write a letter to the editor? <laughs> you guys are good, you're catching on. So you make a statement, you provide supporting facts, and it's usually 200 words or fewer. Here's an example of a letter to the editor. My name is Scott Pressler. I'm running for school board. I want to give parents choice that they can choose whether to have in-person, hybrid, or homeschooling. Because I believe fundamentally that parents, not government, should be able to dictate how to run their lives. Vote for me on Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. And so that's a letter to the editor. It's short, it's sweet, it's succinct, it gets your message out. And guys, very much like a press release, this is zero dollars free advertising. What is your local newspaper here in Tulsa? I understand they're probably a liberal rag. I'm sorry. But remember in life, you miss 100% of opportunities that you yourself don't take. So my suggestion to you is all the candidates that are running for office, write a letter to the editor every single week until they publish that gosh darn letter to the editor. Because it's very much like, guys, if you have a Democrat that represents you, 
and you never call that Democrat to voice opposition, then they will be able to truthfully say, I received no opposition to the Affordable Care Act, to mask mandates, to vaccine passports, to defunding our police. So don't be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Voice your opinion, even if there is opposition. Next slide. Please. Uh, the other way, go, go the other way. Okay, there we go. Community service, this is what our Republican Party desperately needs. We need love, compassion, empathy, and I believe most importantly, action. I'm done with the empty promises. I'm done with the rhetoric of what they hope to accomplish. I'm working to make sure that in 2023, when Republicans take the House and take the Senate, that we are able-bodied and prepared on day one that we are putting forth legislation on medical freedom, that no American citizen should be forced into retirement or forced to lose their job, their pension for not taking the COVID-19 vaccination. And I want, you can clap for that. And I want to hold big tech accountable, which is a free speech issue that dissidents are not censored on social media, where the government is not working with private companies to silence political opposition. And I want energy independence and the Keystone Pipeline. And yes, after we introduce legislation, we are going to impeach Joe Biden for gifting the Taliban billions of dollars. But first, we must show that we are prepared to lead. That must happen first if the people of this country entrust Republicans to lead. Now, these children in Baltimore, they looked at me after a cleanup and they said, Mr. Scott, we had so much fun picking up trash. <laughs> and I figure if I can get kids to love picking up trash in the most dangerous city in America, Gosh, if all of us did an act of compassion, an act of service, an act of love, I firmly believe that we could transform this country for the better. So think about ways that you can give back right here in Tulsa, that you can give back in Oklahoma City. Next slide. Campaign rules, be yourself. Guys, if I didn't have my cowboy boots, if I didn't have a flat iron, you would say a body snatcher done got him. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, but that doesn't mean don't be polished, don't be prepared. That doesn't mean don't bathe. It just means, <laughs> no, you still got to do that. It just means be your true, authentic self. Because guys, people are going to be able to sniff out a BS or a mile away. They're going to know if you're genuine and authentic or whether you're putting on a farce or a charade. Again, beware of consultants. They are bloodsuckers. They are ticks. They are leeches, they are sharks, they are lawyers. I'm sorry for giving me lawyers in the building today. I'm sorry. Again, use ballotpedia.org to decipher the most effective and efficient districts. Pictures or it didn't happen for the love of all that is holy. If there's a baby, you kiss that baby. <laughs> If there's a golden labradoodle, you rub its belly and take a video. And I mean that because babies, puppies, and kittens, they show that a human has vulnerability. They show your ability to connect with something that's more vulnerable than yourself. It's an opportunity to have that awe factor. Door knocking wins elections. If you are a candidate who tells me that you're not knocking on doors, number one, I will not help you. And number two, you will not win. You must knock on doors if you want to be competitive even in the red state of Oklahoma. And last, social media following doesn't equal votes. And what I mean by that 
is I think it's great that somebody has a million followers, but how many of those a million followers live in Oklahoma? How many of those a million followers live in Tulsa in Oklahoma? So don't be impressed by the politician that looks too good to be true. Be impressed when a politician is registering voters. Be impressed when a politician is shaking hands. Be impressed when a politician is knocking on doors. Be impressed when a politician is doing meet and greets or coffee with constituents. Be impressed when they put in the work. And if they're not doing the work, then they have not earned your vote. Now, don't, don't click just yet, don't click. I get criticized for this presentation because people say to me, Scott, you're telling me what to do. <laughs> what shouldn't I do? Click. <laughs> <laughs> so the number one golden rule, no hair sniffing. Don't, don't touch people, don't Joe Biden them, don't Joe Cuomo them, you know. And if you're like our vice president and you really enjoy cackling, I would like to strongly encourage that you kind of limit the number of cackles per day. <laughs> and if you're a certain New Jersey governor that shuts down beaches, don't be filmed at the beach. <laughs> little things, little things. Next slide. I've interviewed people who have successfully run for office, and I always ask them the same question. What advice would you give to a newcomer, somebody that's never run before? What would you tell them? Be you. Don't back down. Create the movement. Attend every possible event you can go to. Don't be shy to stand by your convictions. I spoke to a legislator in New Hampshire who told me that New Hampshire is actually one of the least religious states in the entire country. He ran as an unabashed Christian conservative, winning his election overwhelmingly because he was authentic, he was genuine, he didn't try to act like somebody that he wasn't. Next slide. What is the future? Oh, I forgot, I added something. Okay, so I'm the brand ambassador for Rise Pack. Now this is actually really cool with the work that we're doing. We're based out of New York, Long Island. And so what we've done is in just a few months, we have registered 10 thousand new Republican voters in the state of New York. We have data on likely Republican unregistered voters. You guys are all a part of the electorate. You're already a part of the system. I'm talking about people that don't vote. Now what we do is we either knock on their door, send them a mailer, or do targeted social media to translate them into a registered voter and then ultimately mobilize them to the polls. Now, as testament of the fruits of our labor, in 2021, in the state of New York, we flipped NASA County on Long Island from blue to red. We helped in part flip four city council seats from blue to red. We flipped a district attorney seat who was pro bail reform, getting criminals back on the streets within 24 hours from blue to red. So if you guys wanna win, we need to register new Republican voters. And we are expanding to the state of Florida. I'm spending the entire month of April in Florida, crisscrossing the state. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, focusing on Florida's 7th Congressional District, Florida's 13th Congressional District. The work that we are doing is going to have a direct impact on taking that gavel from Nancy Pelosi. Next slide. What is the future of our Republican Party? Last year, I traveled to 28 states. I did a lot of listening. And this is what I surmise that the American people care about. Number one, over medical freedom, over energy independence, over anything else, the number one issue is election integrity. Having safe and secure, fair and free elections. 
And that's why it's so important. Miss Laura, I want you to raise your hand, Miss Laura. This young lady right here, on February 8th, we're having a school board, city council, local elections, but we're in desperate need of election day workers. If Republicans don't fill those seats, can you tell me who is going to fill those seats? Democrats. Democrats. So please, if you have time, to spend being an election day worker on February 8th, I want you before you leave, please visit with Laura. Please sign up as an election day worker. You actually get paid by the county. You get paid for your time. You can then donate that. You can buy a pair of shoes. You can donate it to the Tulsa County GOP. But the fact of the matter is, if you guys want election integrity, then you need to be a part of the solution by becoming an election day worker. And again, we we are in need of 120, so please sign up with Miss Laura. Medical freedom, this is the second most important issue facing our country. And you know, I think it's actually an issue that can help build our Republican Party. Think about this for a second. Who are the people that for the last two years, through their compassion and empathy, served we the American people? Police officers firefighters, nurses, doctors, teachers, the military, truckers, construction workers, grocery store workers. Those people have been doing the job for two years. Why all of a sudden are they forced to choose a medical decision or face losing their job or face losing their 20 year pension that they've been building and working towards? Why must they change their profession this is an opportunity for us to stand with union workers, the very people that although we don't believe that anybody should be forced to join a union, we at the same time don't believe that union workers should be forced to leave their jobs for not taking the COVID-19 vaccination. We have an opportunity to win over teachers, to win over union workers, to win over nurses, the healthcare industry. This is the future of our Republican Party that we can truly fight for working class America. Parental choice and education. How many of you are moms and dads? Raise your hand, please. Is this an important issue to you? Yes. Making sure that we parents, not government, get to dictate how to educate our children, get to decide, we as the parents, whether or not they wear masks in our schools, it's not mandated by government, whether or not state employees, they have to take the vaccination, whether or not we have sexual material in our schools that is going to elementary students, this is the opportunity on February 8th that you, the voter, are going to be empowered to choose school board members that are going to be focused on parental choice and education. This is a defining moment for Tulsa. This is a defining moment, I believe, for our country. And we are not going to apologize for wanting to secure the border. And we are not going to apologize for wanting to secure the border over securing Ukraine's border. Our country comes first. And last, Internet Bill of Rights. Yes, free speech is not only oral and written, but also applies to the digital space. And when social media platforms decide what to publish, they have become publishers. And that means that they are liable and we should hold them accountable to being as such. Therefore, we can pass legislation both at the state and federal level that we are going to hold big tech accountable so that way they are not able to silence political dissidents. Last, you can clap. That's right, girlfriend. Get it. Get it, girl. Okay.
I'm done with this part of the presentation, but I want to go over quickly voter registration. So we have voter registration forms. Uh, our chairman, Ms. Rhonda, will provide them to you if you don't know where they are. I encourage every single one of you to have them on you. Carry them in your purse, uh, your car, your briefcase, but always have them on you. Yes, people can register to vote online. However, if you register to vote online, I don't have your first name, last name, email address, phone number, meaning how am I going to stay in touch with you? How am I going to let you know you need an ID to vote? How am I going to let you know where the polling location is? Do you have a ride to the polls? Do you know when the polls open? Do you know when the polls close? Now, where do you guys register voters? I want you to please reach out, I mean, it's, it's great we're at a church, but I want you to reach out to your rabbi, your priest, whoever you get your faith services from. And I want you to ask for permission to set up a nonpartisan, nonpolitical voter registration table at church. If Christians voted, we would never lose another election. Yeah. And then, I know this is going to sound a little bit weird, but in, in Oklahoma, do you guys have gun shops? <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys have gun shows in Oklahoma? <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but after you're done calling your rabbi or priest, I want you to call your local gun shop. <laughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to introduce yourself and ask for permission to set up a nonpartisan, nonpolitical voter registration table. Now. Do you think a Democrat is going to register to vote at a gun shop? No! It's going to be Second Amendment Republican voters. So you don't have to go in with a Trump shirt. You don't have to go in with a Tulsa County GOP shirt. This is an opportunity to build rapport with the local gun shop that every Saturday they may let you go register voters. Do you guys here in Tulsa, do you guys have a Home Depot? Yeah. Who goes to Home Depot? Contractors, builders, construction workers, homeowners, you can find a husband there. <laughs> I just saw some ladies perk up. I think I just saw one lady, she's Googling, when does Home Depot close? <laughs> Now, Home Depot is a corporation. They're probably not going to give you permission, but remember, public sidewalk is public property. You will get out of this movement and out of voter registration what you put into it. And again, I mean this to you. The reason why I'm here is there's a sense of urgency to my work because I fundamentally believe that if we are unable to take the House and Senate this November, I firmly believe that our country is done for. It's over. And that's why when I'm done with you all, I'm going to Texas tomorrow. Then two days later, I'm going to California for a week. Then I'm going straight to Nevada. Then I'm going to Ohio. Then I'm going to Savannah, Georgia. Then I'm going to Mar-a-Lago. Then I'm going to CPAC. My entire schedule is already planned out until July of this year. And I want you to know that I'm working night and day because I love our country. And I'm going to do everything because freedom is worth fighting for. And if you have ever felt called to serve. Now is your moment in history. Don't be a quiet observer. Don't sit back. Don't be the one to tell your children, I didn't fight. I watched it happen. I allowed the Democrats to take over our country. I ask you, please, if you are not a member, Join the Tulsa County GOP. I ask you, please become a precinct chair. I ask you, please become an election day worker. I ask you, please register voters. I ask you, please use openstates.org to contact your representatives. With that being said, I want to treat you guys like a focus group for a second. Focus group. So I'm going to name some policies. And when I name a policy, if you agree with it, I want you to cheer. I want you to get excited. I want you to get loud. Do you understand? Yeah. OK, Miss Rhonda, you're going to film this from the back, please. Yeah. And make me look cute. OK. so. 
No vaccine passports. No mask mandates. You open our schools. Open our businesses. Fund the police. And defund the federal government. Secure that gosh darn border. <laughs> Veterans before illegals. <laughs> Parental choice and education. <laughs> and I think it's probably one of the most important. Guys, stop giving money to countries that hate our guts. Is anything that I said untoward? Is anything that I said not common sense? No. This is of an America first ideology and every politician and every piece of legislation should have to undergo the test. Does it put the well-being, peace and prosperity of the American people first? And if it does not, that piece of legislation or that politician, then it needs to hit the road. Yeah. With that being said, I again, I want to thank our chairwoman, Rhonda. You give her applause right now. Right now. I want to thank Miss Jana, who inspired my trip here to Tulsa. I want to thank Spirit Life Church for having us today. And I want to thank you who's going to make sure that this November we have a decisive, overwhelming, America first, Republican victory! I'm done. <laughs> That's it. I'm going <laughs> to pass this to Rhonda. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you.